So I put out a video last night, which would be December 11th, 2023, about a CNN reporter. And the next morning when I wake up, I see there's more information. Somebody watching the video on my team said, ah, Susan, you missed this. Um, and it's kind of important. So I'm adding this to the beginning of the video that I recorded yesterday, the uh, December 11th, 2023 video. I'm just going to add it right here. Let you watch the video. Everything on the video I pretty much uh, discovered as I was researching this topic. And I mostly stand behind it. But if you go to the very end of this video that you're watching right now, you will see I've added more. And that's um, an explanation of what I found uh, to update everybody. It's only been a day, not even 24 hours, and more information has come in from my team. Um, I did, should have done more research as well as the psychic, I mean, not the psychic, the uh, <laughs> reporter for CNN should have done, but I think this is an interesting, uh, well, it's a very extremely interesting uh, thing to add. So watch the video. If you've already watched the video, there's been, I think, 48 people who've seen it since I have uploaded it 10 hours ago or so. If you have already watched a the video, then go ahead and skip the video and just go right to the very end where I talk about what I found. All right. Thanks, guys. Hello, everyone. I'm back from my whirlwind tour of Australia and New Zealand. I was gone almost three weeks, and I have a backload of things to record and articles to write where I publish on Skeptical Inquire. If you are visiting this channel because of one of the many talks I did or the or various people I spoke to, lots and lots of people I spoke to in New Zealand and Australia, all over the place, um, Auckland, Dunedin, um, Queensland, uh, Brisbane, um, Melbourne, Sydney, various places that I did talks. Um, thank you guys for joining me. I really appreciate it. Thank you for your support. Thank you for uh, bringing me over there to do t talks. I ha even had one TV program, New Zealand um, TV NZ. And that was interesting. I was all rehearsed and all ready to go. They sit you down, they do your hair, their makeup. You had an interview with the person beforehand the day before. It's all set. You sit down on your on the TV, you know, they get you all wired up, put you on the couch. And the woman who was talking to me, she asked me questions that were different than the ones I had been told they were going to ask me the day before. And I didn't get to get to the psychic part of what I was going to say because they cut me off. It's like, you know, they talked to you for like three minutes and it was supposed to be about five minutes. And so that's how TV works, you guys. That's just how it is. Video is up on my Susan Gerbeck YouTube channel. You can also find it on my Facebook page. It's called um, TV NZ Breakfast because it's a morning TV show, which is where a lot of the media um, uh, endorses psychics, does these little infomercials for them all the time. No, cre just absolutely credulous sitting down with a psychic and who gives them readings and it's just an infomercial. Anyway, so the first thing I'm going to do, my first video coming back from, from my trip, which is only a couple of days ago, is that I was presented this article from CNN, one of... Um, friends of the channel and a friend of mine I know uh, from Facebook his name is Randy and he gave me this article and like I said I have a whole backlog of things I want to talk about psychic wise to put up on the channel but this one I just okay so I'm not going to read it to you but we're going to talk about it and I'm going to show you a screenshot of it so if you want to look at it and look for it yourself that's fine I'll put a link to it in the description underneath this video once I get this all recorded here is 
here is the article and it was it was published on the 10th of December 2023 by a reporter from CNN thankfully it's in the inter thankfully it's in the entertainment section which is neither here nor there actually um, because people are going to read it as fact and she presents it as fact it's called I was skeptical about a psychic reading what happened surprised me um, it's written by Marianne Carvey M-A-R-I-A-N-N-E G-A-R-V-E-Y and this is for CNN so um, as I said I'm not going to I'm not going to read it to you I'm we're going to talk about it just just go through this a little bit and the psychic medium tells her that he he sells out all his shows but it's not exactly that we've heard of these people before they're in vegas it is a group of three mediums and i'm not sure but they may change hands you know and exchange people like if somebody needs a day off or whatever and they put in another one which is why their name is not the main name it's called brunched by an angel and the premise is, is that you come in and you have a meal like brunch and the different mediums interact um, and do like a little show like somebody comes in and they do readings of the people in the audience and then they have a salad and then they <laughs> another medium comes in and does a reading and they have soup that kind of thing and then a main course or whatever it is it's brunch so brunched by an angel very clever but as i said the 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 psychics aren't names aren't necessarily the premier names i mean now that we don't have um I, there's not really a lot of mediums in doing shows in in vegas right now but uh, i wish i'd gone to this when i was back in vegas in october which is just um let me see which casino it's at it in the psychic i mean can you name him he's sold out he's telling this lady he's sold out oh well it's going to be in new york Midnight Theater in New York plays December 20th. So this was just a, an infomercial for him. I mean, it isn't hard to, to go through and, and replicate this. You just have three people who may or may not have training as a medium or just somebody who's learned how to do cold readings and um, find some venue that's a really beautiful video and some good food and you had nice weight staff and sell your tickets it really is is a clever model business model so i'm sure you guys all know this guy he says he's sold out all the time and he's world famous i guess <laughs> i've never heard of him christopher allen christopher allen medium christopher allen a-l-l-a-n that's his last name all right um let's let's take a looky at this all right so what's going on is this reporter she gets a zoom session with this psychic medium and she she she's does it because she says when i committed to interviewing and getting a reading from a psychic medium the first thing i did was google myself in order to see what this person might be able to somehow divine about me okay so that that is hot reading right so she's got this idea that psychics do hot reading and i get that all the time people will say well there's nothing there's no way they could have known this information about me because it's not available on the internet there's no way there's no way oh my gosh if i had a dollar for that every time i heard that i would have my house paid off by now and i live in california so that can't be so you know that ain't cheap most psychics do not hot read very few psychics hot read most psychics cold read they allow the sitter who is motivated the sitter is a person getting the reading whether they're sitting or not the sitter is putting it all together because they badly would like to believe in whatever is going to happen there's a lot of word play uh double talk and misremembering and so on now as i always say what is missing people who watch this channel often what is missing 
Well, nowhere in here in this article is the audio or a video. And she said she had a Zoom session with him. So I'm sure it's there. Now, it's hard to misremember when you have the video right in front of you of your Zoom session. But what I think is going on here is just cold reading 101. And we'll talk about that in a minute. So she, so the reporter goes into this, assuming that she's, that she could be hot red. Her friend of hers, a mutual friend of ours. I had been told by a mutual friend of ours that I would be blown away by Alan's ability to know things about me. Now, what does that actually mean? A mutual friend of ours. You mean a mutual friend of the psychic and her? Or is some hypothetical um, mutual friend? So, okay. So it sounds like she's already has a mutual friend that recommended the psychic for her. So that's 101. That would be, oh my gosh, that's hot reading. Because when somebody says, oh, you've got to read my friend. She's having all sorts of marital problems and she missed a promotion at work and her and she's worried about the health of her 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 younger brother who's just like a teenager himself and you know he's really acting up you got to give her a reading can you fit her in somewhere i'm going to recommend her to you so that's hot reading okay so the person is being told about your main attribute you know the main issues in your life and so when you finally sit down with a reading with that same psychic you now um they now know where to go you know a teenage brother um, you know, promotion at work and um, the other things that are, you know, mentioned in that well-meaning friend or family member who recommended the psychic. Okay. So hot reading is, is um, common whenever, whenever you've been read by a psychic before, because obviously they already have that information about you, at least know what path to go down. Maybe they don't remember exactly the name of your dog or, exactly what where you work but they they remember enough to know oh this is the one that had that you know thing happen to him but again i don't think that this is what happened so the reporter and the psychic are having this reading over zoom the psychic already knows it's a reporter i believe that comes out in this i mean they have to have I mean, it's total infomercial for this guy. So he's on his best behavior. He's probably very empathetic and and very nice and vulnerable to her. And, and you'll see that it has here. So over our screens, I saw that Alan is a young, handsome guy. Well, no kidding. He's doing shows. He was probably an actor, right? And then he got trained to do this kind of thing. Sitting in a room with a few guitars, he seemed unflashly unflashy compared to some well-known mediums who read the arenas of people or, or base their practice in the celebrity world. All right. So let's think about that a second. If you could communicate with the dead, actually communicate with the dead, totally serious here with you, you would be the most powerful person in the world. Mark Edwards always telling me that, and it's absolutely true. If you could communicate with the dead, then then everyone in any kind of power would want to have you have control of you. You would be um, very powerful because you'd be able to have all the knowledge in the world that could happen. I mean police departments would you'd solve crimes and and you would have you would be able to tell if there's a crime about to be committed you would be able to understand and be able to relate to all the people who have uh, military secrets codes all that stuff okay so the fact that she's communicating with some guy over zoom who has some guitars and he's not flashy just tells you that he's not really communicating with the dead that just doesn't make sense just think about the ramifications if you could communicate with the dead that just no okay so let's just say that part so she talks to him about at what point he realizes he's a medium so in other words she's going right in she says she was a skeptic going into this 
But if you if you're already like, hey, at what point did you find out you're a medium? Then you're saying that you believe that they that they have this ability and it's possible to be a medium. So he goes on and he talks about this. Oh, just the oh my gosh, it's the same old story you hear from almost all of them. When I was a little boy, this thing happened. Like, you know, I didn't know my grandmother was sick, and then here the phone rang, and I knew it was my grandmother. She died, and I was just a little person. And anyway, um, overwhelming emotions of love, and he was oh, on and on and on. He shared that he's adopted. He used to tell his mom as a child that he felt homesick. I miss my fr friends and family. Okay, well, I think he was adopted as a... Mm, well, he says he remembers being three years old and looking at his mom. So he was at least adopted by three, maybe sooner. Okay, well, anyway, the point is, it's just a story that, that uh, people tell about to try to get emotion and to get sympathy and to, to relate to another person. It could very well be an act. I mean, maybe this Christopher Allen person is very nice and friendly, but um, he's talking to a reporter for CNN. So um, uh, he goes on, he's talking about these different things. His dad was a little skeptical and then he became his biggest supporter. And then when I was a kid, I wanted to be a musician, that I went to college. Mm. Okay. Then he starts talking about what he sees in his head. It's symbols. He feels overwhelmed at airports or walking around Manhattan. He's learned to control the volume of the messages he senses. Yeah, I bet he's learned. Okay. It's like shopping in a supermarket and there's always music playing and you you tune out the, the music. Right. Mm-hmm. All right, facts and information come to him in symbols. Yeah, I've heard that before. Um, okay, as for the skeptics, Alan said he's learned to control the volume in that too. I just feel like we're on our own paths and who I'm meant to resonate with, I'm going to resonate with. That's not really answering the question, can he communicate with the dead? Can he prove it? I mean, there's there's hundreds of thousands of dollars out there. I think the, the inner, the, um, um, Center for Inquiries Investigation Network has a half a million dollars for anyone who can prove claims of the paranormal under testable conditions. But those testable conditions are agreed to, mutually agreed to beforehand, signed off on, protocols put in place, and they always do what it is that the psychic says they can do. So, for example, this Christopher Allen says he sees things in symbols. So if you know, we'd have they would have to talk to them and and see how he how that works. Maybe he could could he see symbols like could he see well whatever it is and then come up with some kind of testable thing about symbols. Well, I don't know because this guy is not he's not going to test himself for a half a million dollars because you know he's probably not psychic because I don't think that is a thing. Anyway, so he goes, um, and there are plenty, plenty of people who do believe. Alan has showed out, sold out shows in Vegas where he reads for members of the audience. He's gearing up for this event called Brunch by an Angel. The show will feature him doing readings for an intimate crowd, in other words, small, as they dine and, and sip holiday cocktails. Okay, intimate crowd. What is that, 30 people? So when you say you're sold out and you've got 30 people there, it's not hard just to, to uh, add a few butts in the seats, but you know, you're getting a meal with it. So I don't know. Um, okay. Brunch by an angel is produced by Shane Farley, who said the smaller size of the gathering offers a different experience than arena shows. Yeah, it sure does. People show up with their baggage and thanks to his gifts, he links them with the spirits of their loved ones. It's like a magic portal to forgiveness and deep connections. Being part of this healing journey is truly powerful. Written by a publicist. Okay. All right. So this, the reporter goes in believing that she's going to get a reading from this guy. And her friend has already conditioned her to think that, that it's going to be really, really accurate. So, ah, let me see something here. This is how a show should be. Family togetherness, holiday, right before everybody, you know, starts to kind of- What did you separate down? What just happened? 
She does get the video. Oh my gosh. I'm going to have to watch this video. You're going to want to watch it with me. Let me see how long it is. It's a minute and 25 seconds. Should we do this? Let me download it. Okay. Let's download that. But what, okay. So before I've watched this, I just now saw the link to this thing. Well, it's a minute, a minute and a half. So minute and a quarter. So it can't be the whole darn thing. So let's download that. And what I want to say is let's look at what's missing. Cause she's got a transcript in here of what she thinks is actually going on. And, um, and she says she's no longer a, a, a skeptic. I don't think she was a skeptic to begin with, honestly. And she says that, um, okay, downloading it should be really quick. All right. All right, you guys, we can do this. Okay. So before I get to the reading, the one minute reading that we have in here, and I'll put a link in the, um, in the notes, it's already got 148 views in three days. Well, that's hardly anything. Oh, it's unlisted. Ooh, it's an unlisted video, you guys. Oh. Yes, we have an unlisted one minute video. Okay. <laughs> I get excited at these things. I don't know why I didn't notice that. How is it that I didn't notice that there was a video? Oh, it just says, he asked me. Okay, so she says, in the middle of our interview, Alan urgently jotted down a note and I asked what it said and he'd written down dad. And he says, would your father be passed on? Well, dad, would your father father be passed on? Okay, so don't you know? Um, I said, yes, four years ago, but I didn't provide any more information. Okay, so four years ago, she didn't, she added that. So he says, I told him yes, four years ago. So she is volunteering information. But then again, he she says, I didn't give him any more information. Now, I don't know, because I haven't seen this one minute video and I haven't, seen this whole big thing is there more information in reading the body language of somebody does she lean into it does she tear up does she does she get really like emotional what is it that happens in that exchange because there's a lot of uh, body language and physical expressions that show up in these things you think you're not giving feedback but of course you're giving feedback all right all right now here's this thing Are you guys ready he wants, I'm quoting, I'm quoting Christopher here. He wants me to bring up the idea of feeling like somehow there's a neurological event or there's something wrong with his eyes. He said, one eye was weaker than the other and he feels like you should look at it almost like a scar. Like that's what makes you unique. All that more power to your dad for being the beautiful man he was given this physical flaw. Okay, so what did I just say? Now, depending on how you want to interpret that there's a lot in there your dad being the beautiful man he was okay beautiful in spirit beautiful in appearance except something's wrong with the eye one eye is weaker than the other i think that's probably most of everybody isn't it okay he feels like he feels like you should look at it almost like a scar. Like that's what makes you unique. Mm. Neurological event. The guy's died. It's her father and, an, and something with his eyes. There's something with his eyes. Okay. Let's think about that phrase. Something with the eyes. There's not a problem. Okay. One eye was weaker than the other and he feels like he should look at it like almost a scar. I don't know if this is what's going to be in the video. Something with the eyes. What does that mean? Something wrong with the eyes? Something beautiful about the eyes? Something interesting about the eyes? Some kind of expression he did with his eyes? Uh, maybe his his wife said, I love, you know, she fell in love with him because of his eyes. Maybe the daughter has some remembrance of the eyes. 
a neurological event and he's died. Well, it's kind of general, isn't it? So unless you want to interpret this to fit the scenario you wanted to interpret, really these words are pretty close to being just pretty generic. And if it and if it was wrong, if he threw this out there and it was she had no way of relating to it at all, then he would just move on to something else and she would forget that as a hit. So if he says he wants me to bring up um, there's something neurological event or something with his eyes. We don't know how much of a pause there is. One eye was weaker than the other and he feels like you should look at it almost like a, a scar. Like that's what makes you unique. Was she nodding? Was she tearing up? Was she totally relating to this as she, he says this to her? Okay, so then, as you know, a motivated sitter, sitter who's wants to have the reading, somebody who's motivated to get this reading, always does is they give feedback. And here she does. She tells him that her dad was born with ocular mass. I can't say grat gratis. That's such a, anyway, I'm sorry. A condition where muscles in the eye can deteriorate and be weak. And that as a child, I always hoped he was never picked on or taunted because of his condition. So um, muscles in the eye can deteriorate, deteriorate or be weak. And she knew that from a child. She saw that he had a, diff, you know, one eye was different than the other, or, or maybe both eyes were different than the other. So we don't know if that's both eyes, one eye. His physical self never defined him and nor should you ever dwell on that anymore. That's what Alan says. All right. So that's just a, a platitude that somebody says. And it feels like he's back with your mom. So your mom also passed and there's something about this month. Okay, so your mom also passed. Well, you know, maybe maybe he, you know, we can't put down the fact that it's possible he could have known her parents were dead. That's not difficult to know, especially since he knows he's going to be getting a reading to a, um, a, a reporter for CNN and his friend is the one who, you know, advised him to pick him as the person, the subject. Okay, I'm still not saying that's that's a hit. That's not even really all the hits. Your mom has passed and he's back with your mom. All right, that's fine. Okay, my mom passed away on December 24th, 2014. That's what she writes. So what month? He says, also your mom passed and there is something about this month. So this article is out on December 10th. So are you saying that she had the reading in December? this month and the article for cnn is already out it's already been vetted and gone through all the channels it needs to do boy that's a lot of research she didn't do there's no research in here at all and i'm gonna harp on that because she first off comes right out and says that she googled herself to see if she could have been anything could have been found out about her that's called hot reading, but she never mentions hot reading because she probably has never heard the term because she didn't do any investigation into what is going on in the world of mediumship, like this channel here. I mean, maybe, maybe she's never heard of um, skepticism and people who are like actually experts on and understanding what goes on in the world of mediumship. I don't know how she could have she could have not known about that. I mean, Harry Houdini, James Randi, and lots of people have done written full books on it and videos and articles. And I'm not just counting me. There's people who've been doing this for decades. So if she doesn't know what hot reading is or cold reading, except that, you know, that's, she could have educated her audience, but I guess she wasn't about to do that. Anyway, so uh, I'm starting to rant. So I don't understand. Your, so your mom also passed and there is something about this month saying that this isn't a quote. So it, hopefully that's exactly what he said about this month. What month? This month, December, 
because the next line is my mom passed away on December 24th, 2014. Something about this month. Let's say she had the reading done in December and pushed this article out with obviously no research at all in December. There's something about this month. Something? Like what? It's Christmas. It's Hanukkah. It's a month that has 31 days in it. It's Thanksgiving has just happened. So, well, I mean, I know that's not the, and not December, but you know, it's a time for holidays, maybe, maybe vacations. I don't know. Something about this month. What she he doesn't say it's it's about your mom. He just says, so your mom also passed and there is something about this month. It could have been anything. If 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 there had been a birthday for her daughter in this December, that would have been a hit. If it had been the month that her mom had surgery, that would have been a hit. If it was the month that her mom got dad got married, that would be a hit. If it was the month that her dad died, that would be a hit. Again, 31 days in December. So your odds are really high. There's an awful lot of activity happening in December. It's just, it's just a guess. So the motivated sitter, the reporter, Marianne, she says, my mom passed away in December, as if that's a hit. All he said is there's something about this month. And we don't even know what month it is, but we assume it's December because the way she answered it. Here. Now, again, what is missing? We don't have video except this one minute video that you and I haven't looked at yet. So I could totally be making a fool of myself because maybe it's absolutely perfect. He also nailed what my wedding venue looked like. Okay. I mean, could it be a beach? Could it be, could it be a place where people sat down and had wine and had dinner and could have been a church? I mean, you know, how, how detailed could the guy have gotten? Well, if you walk in, uh, you you walk up the steps and on the right hand side, there's this uh, uh, open bar. But on the left hand side, you're going to see a garden and there's a... he nailed what my wedding venue looked like. And that my daughter is in kindergarten. Well, let's see what the woman looks like. Does it look like she has uh, a child in kindergarten? Is she old enough to be that? Did, did he actually say your daughter is in kindergarten? Does he name her daughter? I doubt it. And how did he know that her daughter's in kindergarten unless she already knew that she had a daughter? Again, when she Googled herself, she said it was easy for people to find out that she has a five-year-old daughter. So five-year-old daughter is kindergarten. Just saying. Um, and has musical talents. Well, your five-year-old probably has tons of talents in your eyes. You're the mother. She probably is loves animals and she can draw and she has talents and flowers and she loves to sing and she of course she has anything out of his mouth you're probably going to say ah that's my daughter yep musical talents that's her or if he said something that wasn't her like oh she's you know i see her in the water swimming and her mother says she's terrified of swimming she won't swim she can't swim he'd say in the future, she will be swimming. See what I'm saying? The psychic can't be wrong. There's no way the psychic's going to be wrong about this. Ah, he knew my best friend's husband had died unexpectedly. Did he actually say your best friend's husband died unexpectedly? Just wanted you to know that I knew that. No, that's probably not what he said at all. Again, where's the names? Did you name the people? Did you say how he died? Anything specific? No, she probably just, he, uh, the psychic probably came up with something. And then she says, yeah, oh my gosh, that's my best friend's husband. And yeah, he died quickly or whatever. You know what I mean? He just said something and she uh, related it to something. Your dad wanted to say he sees your child. All right, well, we already know dad's died and we already know she has a child. So is that 
saying much by saying dad sees your child? Well, of course she, he's going to say that. He already knows dad's dead and he already knows she has a child. Your dad wants to make sure you know that he made a smooth transition and you don't have to worry about him anymore. He's got your cat with him. Okay. That's just piddle paddle, um, trying to make it feel good, you know. So dad wants to make sure you knew he had a smooth transition. No, he had a violent transition. It was horrible. Oh my gosh. Whatever you do, don't die. Because like dad, oh my gosh, it was just traumatic. And then the, no, of course he's going to say he had a smooth transition. They're just trying to play, placate you. You don't have to worry about him anymore. Well, he's dead. So yeah, right. Okay. He's got your cat with him. Well, most people have had a cat or a dog. And if they don't, well, then that's a rare thing. Um, that's not saying much. That's cold reading. And maybe he said something like a cat or a dog. I don't know. She says, I'm glad my dog is watch. My dad is watching my cat. It's awfully nice considering how much he hated them in life. Psyche can't be wrong because now he loves his cat. Hmm. Unless Alan had access to my dad's medical records. Of course, he doesn't have to have access to your dad's medical records. Because everything he just said was just generic. And you made it fit. You, Marianne, made it fit. I'm not quite sure. She's, I'm, I'm quoting her. I'm not sure how he'd come into the information he shared with me. He cold read you. Just general statements. Let's see. And she says, I think some people are just tuned in to a higher frequency. What the heck, lady? You were never a skeptic. Don't, don't try to pass yourself off as a skeptic and then say a higher frequency. Some people, I mean, so one person cold reading you, one person, one person she went to cold reads you. And you're so motivated that you can't find any flaws with it because you can't figure out how he did it. So it must be real. Wow. All right. Maybe it's the holidays or the fact that this Sunday would have been my dad's birthday. Hmm. Or maybe I just need some comfort and was open to receiving it. All I can say is I'm no longer a skeptic. Lady, you were never a skeptic. First off, you're a reporter. I know you're writing for um, uh, an entertainment section of CNN. But you still have um, a lot of power with something appearing on CNN. And you have a lot of this ability for you to be able to um, really influence people. Now, this is why we can't have nice things is because the media buys into this, buys into this as entertainment, fun, giving comfort, no harm whatsoever. Flip it. No need to do any research at all. She doesn't say cold reading, hot reading. She doesn't mention Harry Houdini. She doesn't mention James Randi. She didn't write to anybody. She didn't ask anybody. I, I'm, I'm in tune with all these people all over uh, the world who do this kind of research. Nobody said anything about being interviewed. They're not quoted in here anywhere. So she didn't do even that due diligence. And she didn't give any kind of information about any of this stuff. So let's, let's it's just an infomercial. Okay, so I'm curious too. Let's see what we're going to find out when we play this video. Okay, one minute, 25 seconds. Ha, it's unlisted three days ago. So let's see what we see. This is how a show should be. Family togetherness, holiday. Okay. Brunch by an angel. Here he is with his guitars. Oh, let's share this so that you guys can see what I'm seeing. Should be interesting. There he is. Right before everybody, you know, starts to kind of. What did you just write down? What just happened? What are. Would our father be passed on? Yeah. 
And what is so important about like this month of December? Because December 10th. It is my dad's birthday. Yeah. So uh, here's. Does this happen to you all the time so, that people get upset unprofessionally? <laughs> there's something with his eyes that he wants me to bring up. Like one eye was weaker than the other you're, or something. You're, you're with me. I'm, not, I'm sorry about my reaction. I'm, I'm <laughs> freaking out. My dad had a closed eye and I always felt very sad uh, for him because of it. Well, this is the way to assure you that he is okay. I don't know if your mom predeceased your dad, but he feels like he was like, I'm back with her. So who's the five or six year old? Because your dad feels like someone who should be like in kindergarten, first grade or something. My daughter. It's your own dad that wants to say he sees your, your child. Holy moly, that is wild. <laughs> Did you get married in a place that was indoors, but it looked like it was outdoors? Yes, what the f <laughs> your dad's way to say he's connected to all these areas of your life. I knew he'd show up. This is my way to remind you, you have not lost him. And Thank you. Happy birthday, Dad, next week. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, man. That is so obvious. It is so obvious because what she wrote with quote marks on it on this CNN article is not what that man just said. She did not transcribe exactly what he said. Let's look at this again. Oh my gosh. He wants me to bring up the idea of feeling like like somehow there's a neurological event or there's something with his eyes. One eye was weaker than the other. And he feels you should look at it almost like a scar. Like that's what makes you unique. All that power to dad for being the beautiful man he was given this physical flaw. There is no dot, dot, dot in there. So is that what he said? Because that thing was highly edited. One eye, I'm getting the feeling that one eye was weaker than the other. And she's like, oh, my effing this, oh, my effing that. You can see her whole room. That's what people use for cold reading. Awesome. So she put this in quotes, what he actually said, but the video is not what she said. There's something with his eyes. One was weaker than the other. That's what he said. And then here it is that she goes into this other thing about his eye being closed and all that. Um, I feel like, I feel like you're, and there's something about this month. Hmm. Feels like he's back with your mom. So your mom also passed. So your mom also passed. That's not what he said. He did not say, so your mom also passed. He also did not say, we're going to look at this again, or part of it. Um, it feels like he's back with your mom because she says your mom has passed. He asks her, has she passed? So your mom also passed and there's something about this month. It's my mom's birthday, my dad's birthday. He nailed what my wedding venue looked like. Nailed it. He didn't nail it. He said, were you married someplace that looked indoors, but it looked like it was outdoors? Hmm. Your dad went, oh. oh. <laughs> uh, he knew that my daughter is in kindergarten and has musical talents. That's not what he said. He said, who is the five-year-old who could who looks to be in kindergarten? That's not, your daughter is in kindergarten. He said, who is the five-year-old? Then she could say whoever, whoever. Well, let's see, my, my niece is five. Our next door neighbor is a five-year-old. Um, she's in this video, doesn't talk about the cat. Let's see here. I wrote down the word dad. It's just the word dad. That's, that's not. Not. 
it's not a big deal. Oh my gosh. Okay, let's, <laughs> you guys are getting the real me here. Okay, let's look at that a second. Now, really pay attention to what he says. I'm only going to show part of this. Pay close attention. He does not say your daughter is uh, in kindergarten. He does not say, he does not say, so your mom passed, also passed. And there's something about this month. And then she relates it immediately to her mom. Okay, listen. Oh my gosh. I just, I just can't. I just can't tell you. I just get back and it, it's so frustrating. Yeah. What is so important about like this month of December? Because December 10th. It is my dad's birthday. Wait, wait, wait. This is how shows should be. Family togetherness, holiday, right before everybody, you know, starts to kind of. What did you just off. write down? What, what just happened? happened? Would our would our father be passed on? Yeah. Would what is so important about on? like this month of December? Because December. He... Would our father be passed on? No, he's not. Oh, I must be your grandfather. That's all they have to do to get out of it. Now listen to how he says this about the month. Yeah. What is so important about like this month of December? Because December he... 10th. What is so important about this month of December? She in the article relates that to her mother's death and here she's talking about her dad's birthday either way he doesn't say your mother died in december or your father is born in december he says what is so important about this month it's december 31 days hanukkah christmas heck new year's eve is on the 38th first of december and lots of other things can happen in the month of december and if if that's the only month brought up which is probably unlikely he probably mentioned many other months that have 31 days in them if he's like john edward just throwing that out there let's see go back let's go back It is my dad's birthday, yeah. So uh, here's- Does this here's happen to you all the time? So, that people get upset unprofessionally? <laughs> there's something with his eyes that he wants me to bring up. Like one eye was weaker than the other or something. Okay. She's obviously heavily motivated. She's crying. She's a motivated sitter. That is a person who is motivated to get that reading. She is going to find that connection. Come hell or high water, she's going to listen to everything he says and, and emotionally attach herself to it. This is how they handle these grieving people, these people who are women, damn it. This woman, this reporter who's a woman is making this into some sort of entertainment when we all know that the people who are most victimized by these grief vampires are women. And there is nothing entertaining about that. So I'm highly insulted that this woman did not reach out to anybody. She didn't read a book. She didn't read an article. She didn't talk to anybody. And she just comes on. She's in CNN. And she's just throwing it out there. She's just another person who's just manipulated He's manipulated her and she's supporting him. She's endorsing him. She's absolutely doing a freaking infomercial for this guy. We put out videos and articles in great detail about these people, explaining the details of it. Like on my channel, I've got what, 150 videos explaining in detail what's going on in these readings. And this woman just flippantly says, well, I'm not a skeptic anymore. You never were a skeptic because you didn't do the firsthand business of doing any kind of research you can how are you even a reporter that doesn't even do basic research there's multiple organizations out there there's multiple people living who would have happily have zoomed with you before and after your reading and given you some really good information about what actually happened to you but you didn't reach out to any of them not a word 
and then calling it entertainment, putting it on an entertainment channel. Oh, it just makes me so angry. We work so hard to, in, to get this information out there to the public so less women are manipulated by these emotional grief vampires who are out there latching on to their grief. You have no notion of how much pain and how just devastating this is to these women. Women, 98% of them are women, and just flippantly say, make it out like it's, like it's, it's, oh, it's just comfort. That's not comfort. These people are not licensed therapists. These are just people, probably entertainers themselves, who've just learned to make a quick buck. Did you like that haunted music in there too? So she know when to cry. This is not a game, Marianne. This is not entertainment. You are being manipulated. And then you in turn turn around and put this out on CNN. And all these other people are going to be fall for it and be manipulated just as badly as you are. The tricks that he's using on you are just common cold reading techniques. Anybody in this business would tell you that if you had asked. Let's go back to this video. My gosh. Let's see. Listen, listen to this. You're f***ing with me. I'm, not, I'm sorry about my reaction. I'm, I'm freaking out. My dad had a closed eye. Yeah. So here, here, all he said is one eye is weaker than the other. One eye's, let me, let me play that real quick again, because I need to make sure I am saying that right. He says something about a, everybody's eye, one's lower than the other, weaker than the other. And if it didn't hit, he would have moved on to something else. How long was your Zoom reading with him? To get it down to this one minute, 25 seconds and a half, and that 15 seconds or so was just video. I mean, just promotion for him because you're just giving him a freaking promotion. My dad had a closed oh, no, eye. No, let's go back a second. I'm, not, I'm sorry about my reaction. I'm I'm <laughs> freaking out. My dad had a closed oh, eye. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> There's something with his eyes that he wants me to bring up. Like one eye was weaker than the other you're, or something. Okay. There's something about his eyes he wants me to bring up. He's looking right at her. He's looking at Marianne right there. So he can see if she's like, or she's like, you know, if she, if she has some kind of feedback to him and you are giving him feedback, don't tell me you're not giving him feedback. We can see you bouncing around on this video, crying and all these other things. You are totally giving him back feedback. So he knows he's on the right path. And all he said, all he said was, there's something about his eye. One eye might have, was weaker than the other. So is everybody's. You, Marianne, are the one who decided that that was going to that was an issue with your dad. It was a hit, but it's not because he got it from the dead. He got it because that's just a statement that people say. It's like saying, "And you have a scar on your knee." You know, of course you have a scar in your knee. Just about everybody has a scar in their knee. If they say, you have a scar in your right knee, and they say, oh, actually, it's my left knee. Well, it's your left knee, but it is my right knee. You know, you see what I'm saying? They can't lose. Listen to this. We still haven't gotten to the mom again. Here we go. You're f***ing with me. I'm, not, I'm sorry about my reaction. I'm, I'm <laughs> freaking out. My dad had a closed eye, and I always felt very sad uh, for him because of it. Well, this is the way to assure you that he is okay. I don't know if your mom predeceased your dad, but he feels like she you did. were just like, I'm back with her. I don't know if your mom predeceased your dad or not. And then she interjects with, she did. You heard that? You can play it back. I don't want to play it back again. Let's let's look at the what she wrote. Because here's what she wrote.
Huh. And it feels like he's back with your mom. So your mom also passed and there's something about this month. That is not what he just said. And you, Marianne, have that in quotes. So when you put quotes around something, the reader thinks that that is exactly what they said. If you're missing some words, you put the little dot, dot, dot. You know how that works? Journalism school. Jesus. And it feels like he's back with your mom. So your mom also passed. And there is something about this month. That is not what he said. And when you play games with these words, then this is an example of exactly what is going on. You misremember, you rush the article, you're, you want to have this thing, you want it to be real. So you, you, you are the problem. This is why we have so much of this nonsense. Do you not think that maybe we have enough problems in this world that we don't have to have people just laying on with this kind of nonsense? Come on. We don't need to be dumbing down our society any dumber than it is. You know, I have great hopes for people, but you've got people in this world who are doing a lot of work to try to explain this stuff and make it so that people don't have this kind of, just this one kind of nonsense and you're just supporting it. Oh, gosh. And he did say, there's something about this. What is it about this month? And that's not what he said. There's something about this month. He said, December. And you said, my mom passed away in December. And my and then she says that her dad died and uh, was born in December. It's emotional. Now, look, you did this reading apparently a few days ago and throw out this article. You threw up this article without any research. You just threw it out there because you thought it was fun and entertaining or whatever. And it's giving you great comfort. It's harmful. You should own this. Just it's frustrating to me. You do not understand how frustrating it is to be out there working hard. And people like, uh, not just me, other people too, working very hard to get these articles out there for people like you, reporters like you, to be able to find so that you can get this information so you can get it right and not be telling people, I'm no longer a skeptic. If it's that easy for you to change your mind, if it's just this one guy cold reading you over an hour Zoom call that tells you a bunch of cold reading crap because you can't differentiate it between wordplay and your emotions taking over and wanting to be in contact with your mom and dad, who he never named, by the way, or your daughter or your cat. You should think about that before you throw out another article like that. It's embarrassing to journalism. And people take this seriously because you're a journalist and it's on CNN. And if you don't want to have this nonsense where people are like, well, it's just CNN and they're not really news. Well, then that's why people can say stuff like that because there's journalism. That's not journalism. That's just a promotion you did for this guy. Pure promotion. You let your emotions get over, over you. And that is not how you do journalism. And I don't even have a journalism degree. So I know that. Seriously. Just makes me so angry. Fine. You know, I just, you know, we do one thing, we put one foot in front of the other, and then somebody comes along and does this flippant um, entertainment article that goes out to thousands and thousands of people, if not tens of thousands of people. That just alleviates like a year of my work with one article that you threw out after like three days of research. There was no research in that at all. You should be embarrassed. Anyway. more to come not with this woman not with that psychic that was awful cold reading
Okay. So here's the update. This is, I think it's been about 10 hours since I recorded the, the video that you just watched or just fast forwarded through. <laughs> and I put it up, put it out there. Some people watched it and already responded and they responded positively, but of course they're people from my community. So but one of one person from my team said, Susan, you should have looked into this more in depth because I took her at her word, the reporter, Marianne, at her word. She says, I Googled myself and to see what it is that they would find. Right. So what they would find, she says, is that I have a five year old daughter and that I have parents that have died and then she goes, gets a reading from this guy, Christopher Allen. And at the very end of the article, she says, unless they uh, had access to my father's medical records, I can't understand how he would have known about this uh, weak eye that he has. And I, and I do want to point out that the psychic says weak eyes. He says something to do with his eyes, not one eye. Uh, which is what she said. So words matter in the way they say it when it comes to these psychics. They're supposedly communicating with the dead. And the father, if he was communicating with them, well, I think it's a I think it's a problem that the psychics had eyes and it's actually one eye. But okay, if you want to quibble about it, that's fine. I'm just pointing it out there that it's inaccurate. Only Marianne is the one who decided that that was a big deal. I assumed that she was cold read. And I still stand by it that a lot of that is cold reading. And she was so um, emotional, so motivated for the sitting to go well, to be in touch with her father and her mother, that it was... Um, so much feedback she was giving to the psychic that it was easy to see that it was cold reading. But, and I mentioned this in the video, that the person getting the reading, the person, the psychic giving the reading, knew he was talking to a reporter. He knew he was talking from a reporter on CNN who was doing a story on mediumship and on him. And it's in his best interest for him to come across as accurate as possible. Now, most psychics do not hot read. They do not do research ahead of time. Most don't. But there are some who are celebrity psychics who, if they have the chance and they think they can get away with it, they will hot read. If they can, if if the situation is is such that they're getting a reporter or somebody of some kind of influence, they will go to the step and see what they can find. Because why not? We've seen this done on uh, morning breakfast TV shows multiple times. And there's videos on this on this channel about that from, from different psychics. But um, I think that I should have been more, I should have done more research on this psych, uh, on this medium. No, on the reporter. Boy, I'm fuddled this morning myself. I should have done more research on the reporter because when she said she Googled herself, I assumed she had done a little bit more looking into her uh, her photos and things like that than she did because my team member came up with um, the father's um, obituary. Very quickly, easy to find the father's obituary. And I'm not going to show you the obituary right now because... You could find it yourself if you wanted to. But what my team member found is on the obituary, there were several photos of the father. And here they are. I blurred out, I've cropped it and I blurred out the little baby that he was holding. Now, that is a weak eye. That's not weak eyes, it's weak eye. So if, he, if the psychic did a little bit of hot reading, 
I'm not saying he did, because I still say that he could have cold read her and just accidentally got the weak eye statement because most people have weak eyes. I mean, I was looking at my video and I have one eye a lot smaller than the other when I was looking at the video. I'm sure you guys noticed that. And probably most people that you talk to, one eye is a little weaker than the other. You can see that the, and okay, also weak eye, does that mean that the eyelid is closing a little bit? Or does that mean that one prescription of the eye is weaker than the other? You know, I hadn't thought about saying that too, but I mean, that's, <laughs> we have different prescriptions for eyes. So what does it mean? So I do still say, that it could have been cold reading and that this psychic said your father had something about his eyes when I was weaker than the other. All right. Okay. So that's, that's, hits just about everybody everywhere at all time. But if, if, if he was trying to say one eye is like closed more than the other because it's weak or something or an injury to it or something like that, well, he could have, found these photos because my team member found it very quickly on the obituary of the of her father and we know what her name is because she's a reporter and it's not hard to get google her her name is kind of odd and the the psychic has every invested interest whatsoever to say to do some googling on this woman in preparation for the video uh, that he was going to do this reading, he was going to do with her over Zoom. So I I don't have great uh, feelings towards this woman as a journalist because obviously that was really easy. I should have figured it out. But I really did believe that when she said that she had Googled herself and that there was no way that he could have known this about her father, that she had taken into account that there are photos of her father on the internet, easily identifiable, just with a Google of her name to find the obituary for his father, her father. Um, I, I assume uh, that there are other things out there, maybe uh, a picture of her venue where she got married Maybe that's out there too. I, I I wouldn't find that odd. I mean, her her and her husband are married and there's announcements and there's wedding pictures, maybe not finding her social media, but finding the social media of her husband or other people connected to her social media profile, bridesmaids, family members. I mean, is there a picture on the father's obituary of her wedding? I don't know. Maybe is there somebody else? You know, check and tell me what you think. Are there pictures of this woman's five-year-old daughter, who's a kindergartner, who had musical abilities? Is there? I mean, that sounds just like cold reading. And she'd already told the psychic that she had a five-year-old because he said, "Who is the five-year-old in kindergarten?" She says, "That's my daughter." <laughs> so that was hard. <laughs> So possibly there are pictures of this too. And if so, oh my gosh, that it's even lamer. This reading is even lamer than I thought. These pictures of her father, that's so obvious. Oh my gosh. So this reading that she thinks was so amazing changed her life and turned her from skeptic into believer. One reading, thank you very much. Not years of study, not years of evidence. No, one study, one one mediumship reading um, <laughs> turned her into a, uh, from skeptic to believer. That's wow. Oh, I thought this was an interesting comment. This is from one of my friends um, wrote this on a post on Instagram. This is a good friend of mine who writes very, very well, very talented man. He says about what happened to this um, reporter from CM CNN. He says, it's like writing a review of a play and opening with, I never cry when I go to the theater or watch a movie. And then seeing a great actor in a heartbreaking scene, you're transformed. This woman just saw a manipulative, 
good actor and didn't realize that's what she was seeing. And that kind of sums it all up, doesn't it? So if you like this video, if you like this kind of reporting, thank you for your kind wishes welcoming me back from my uh, tour of Australia and New Zealand with the lectures and so on that I did. I have a lot of content still to get to you. Please like, please share, please subscribe and leave me comments. I love that this little community we have is reaching out and giving me information. Like I said, I've got all kinds of stuff that I need to do videos on and I just haven't gotten to them because I've only been back. This is my third day. So I'm starting. Thank you guys. Let me know if you come up with pictures of her venue, of her wedding and her daughter's musical talents. I, I, I just, I'm just, I just can't believe how credulous this reporter is. And I'm really embarrassed for her. I'm embarrassed for her, her profession. And CNN, some people said some not so nice things about CNN. And I watch CNN often. But, you know, we have to remember these people who are reporting. I mean, this isn't the Washington Post or uh, New York Times, which sometimes gets it wrong also. Um, it, we have to remember this is just one woman's opinion writing in an entertainment section, which is true. Uh, it's, it is the entertainment section, but she has a responsibility even still to report good facts. And she is influencing people because lots of people aren't going to realize that it's entertainment section or they're going to take it as a grain of salt because she comes through so clearly and so passionately that her life has changed from this reading. And I'm kind of wondering now and this is me being giving the woman the benefit of the doubt because i i just have a hard time understanding that she fell for this and she's okay with this it's only been a few days apparently since she had this reading and possibly now she's getting feedback from her friends family uh, other writers other people who have read her column and they're starting to say um, give her feedback saying you know, Marianne, that wasn't, that was uh, cold reading or possibly hot reading, or I found this photo of your dad or whatever. I found this picture of your wedding venue. It's on the, it's out there publicly. So maybe she's starting to change her mind a little bit. And I, like I said, I'm assuming good faith in that she may start to realize what happened to her. And maybe there'll be a better article that comes out from her of how she's had this experience, which, you know, how she got so caught up in it emotionally and how she's now coming out and saying with more evidence that, you know, here's what I learned. Here's here's a, how I see how easily people are, are manipulated when they're grieving. Her father hasn't been gone that long. Um, and how easily you can get sucked up into this. And I made a mistake. I'm hoping that's what she does. I really, really hope that's what she does. Um does she have that kind of journalistic integrity? I don't know. I don't know her work. I hope she does. Would her would her um, CNN, you know, leaders would they allow her to do that? I hope they have a journalistic integrity enough to do that. I haven't searched to see what other responses have been out there, but. I think I'm going to try to do that. If you guys find links, put them in the comment section of this video. I'd appreciate it. And thank you all for all that you do. I appreciate it.